Hey, it's Manly Parks. Welcome to another episode of the Brandywine Angler. It is February 1st, 2019, which means that any day now, we will start to see the first movement of yellow perch on their spawning run up into the rivers and creeks of the upper Chesapeake Bay and really throughout the Chesapeake region. You'll know if you're uh, a subscriber to the Brandywine Angler that that's the kind of fishing that I like to do. In fact, I grew up in uh, the uh, eastern shore, northern part of the eastern shore of Maryland, and have been fishing for yellow perch during their spawning run uh, as far back as I can remember. It's a great kind of fishing. It's a harbinger of spring. When you find the fish, they're plentiful. And while I don't encourage that you keep fish on their spawning run, nevertheless, it's a lot of good sport and uh, it's a great preseason to the upcoming fishing season. If you've watched some of my videos, you know that I've talked about some of the tactics and approaches to use to target these fish during their spawning run. And I've put up some videos showing uh, how I'm actually catching them and that sort of thing. But I haven't really discussed the gear that I prefer. So that's going to be the topic of today's video. Now in terms of gear, what I prefer for this kind of fishing is a spinning outfit for sure. You don't need heavy line because these aren't big fish and you're not trying to horse them out of obstructions and that type of thing. You probably don't need a real stealthy presentation either because the waters of these rivers and creeks where these fish are moving in their spawning run tend to be pretty muddy or stained and rarely are they of a sufficient clarity that you would need a kind of a super finesse presentation that might be required, for example, for trout in crystal clear streams or lakes. So I think that you can use your preferred style of line, be that braid or fluorocarbon or monofilament. And I think that six pound test is a pretty nice pound test rating, at least for mono and fluorocarbon. For braid, you could probably get a little bit heavier than that because the diameter of the line is so thin, but you wouldn't need to. In terms of the kind of reel I'm looking for, the spinning reel, really, you just need an ultralight reel. These are not big fish. A really huge yellow perch is going to be 13 or 14 inches. So you're not talking about really, really big fish and the water's cold, so they don't fight all that vigorously as compared to maybe a warm water um, fish that's known for its finding capabilities. So you don't really need uh, a reel with massive capabilities in terms of drag or in terms of line capacity or anything like that. So I tend to prefer a ultralight sort of like 500 or 1000 size reel for this kind of fishing. My current preferred reel for this kind of fishing or for any kind of light freshwater fishing has to be in terms of a value proposition the Fluger President. In this kind of fishing I think the 25 is a great size. The 30 is fine, but probably bigger than you need. If you have it, it works fine. The 20, which is sort of the real ultralight trout size uh, of that reel, is perfectly reasonable as well. So any of those options work. But really, any similar reel like that will serve you fine. You have to have a rod that has enough backbone to it to be able to allow you to fish what I've called the double jig drop shot rig. Now that's not a heavy setup by any means, but if you're using a real noodle rod, you might have a little bit of trouble 
with a double jig drop shot set up overpowering it a little bit. On the other hand, if you have a rod that's too beefy, too much of a fast tip type rod, you're not going to really get much enjoyment out of fighting these fish because they're just not that big. So I'm looking for a balance between something that will allow me to comfortably fish the tactics that I use for this kind of fishing, specifically the double jig drop shot and the float and fly presentation, while at the same time having enough play and enough flexibility that I enjoy the fight and I'm not just hossing these fish in um, because that's not very much fun. From my perspective, what that means is I have a range of different rods, uh, but right now I think my current favorite is a Fenwick Eagle rod that I have. They're light action, not the ultralight, but the light action six foot. That's a pretty soft rod, but it's not too much of a noodle. Uh, you could probably go with a longer rod if you wanted. This is bank fishing. It sort of depends on the spot you're fishing. I fish a fairly narrow part of the upper reaches of a river, and so it's really more like a big creek. And I can cast, you know, almost to the other side with that particular rod, but the longer rod will give you a little bit more casting distance capability. And if you happen to be fishing a spot where the, it's a little wider and you want to have a little more coverage, perhaps you would want to move to a six and a half or even a seven foot rod. Um, but keep in mind that if you do that, you want to try to maintain the lighter action rod along the way because, you know, if you get a big long rod like that and then you get a medium action or medium heavy action rod, you're not going to have uh, much fun with the fish and it's also probably not going to pair very well with the, the smaller style spinning reels that I prefer for this. So here's a look at the Fluger President 25. This particular reel is paired in a combo package with a five foot ultralight action Fluger President rod. This is actually a pretty nice combination. I was able to find this on sale, um, I think at Dick's at some point last year, for something like 60 bucks for the rod and reel together. It's really hard to beat that, and I really enjoy this setup. Its length at five feet is a little short for this type of application. I actually purchased this to fish creeks in my area with for small smallmouth bass and red-breasted sunfish and that sort of thing. But this rig really does work well for the float and fly presentation. It is a little light, I would say, for the double jig drop shot, but it works. If you're fishing almost exclusively the float and fly approach as opposed to the double jig drop shot approach for these fish, you can get away with even lighter tackle because the overall rig is not very heavy. You just have the weight of the bobber and then the weight of a very, very light jig underneath the bobber. So you can get away with a true ultralight trout style rod for that but if you want to have the flexibility to switch back and forth between the double jig drop shot and the float and fly, having a little bit more firm action that is a light action rod as opposed to an ultra light action rod might be preferable here for you to have just a little bit more flexibility in your approach. Now right here we have the Fenwick Eagle rod that I was mentioning before. This is there you can see the it's the light model, light to moderate action, six foot, one sixteenth to three eight ounce uh, lure, two to eight pound test line. I'm not sure about three to three eight ounce lures on this, but it certainly is a really nice setup for the double jig drop shot. It's got enough backbone to fish that setup, and in my videos from last year, 
this is the rod I was fishing with. The reel here is a Pen Conflict 1000. Now that's overkill kind of a reel for this fishing. You don't need a reel like the Pen Conflict 1000, um, which is a very nice reel that's saltwater capable with sealed bearings and so forth. You don't wouldn't need anything like that. Um, but that's a nice reel and I have it on this rig right now. I also, as you can see, have the fluorocarbon on here. This is six pound test fluoro that I have this rigged up with. So this is, in my view, a good type of example of the, of the class of rods and reels that are really ideal for this spring yellow and white perch spawning run fishing. One issue is whether you would want to fish with any kind of leader, particularly if you're fishing a unifilament line or a braided line as your main line. Now, I do tend to fish with a leader, but I'm not sure that's necessary. My father, for example, who catches m way more than his fair share of these fish, often fishes without any leader at all. He fishes with a kind of an olive green or very dark colored braided line and a light line class, like six pound test, and he just ties on the float and fly rig, he just ties the jig directly to that line and puts the bobber above it. I'm a little more sensitive to fish getting spooked by the line than he is, but it's probably not necessary, truthfully. The water tends, as I said, to be muddier, turbid, stained. Even if there hasn't been a lot of rain or snow or that kind of thing, the water still will be stained in these creeks. And the fish probably aren't going to be particularly line shy. So if you're somebody who doesn't feel like you want to mess with a leader and you prefer to fish a braided line or a unifilament style line, by all means, I think you can do that. I would note that if you're going to fish the white unifilament line, which is my preferred line, as opposed to the darker colored, I think it's olive colored or black or whatever, you might want to use a leader because the white line shows up very well. Frankly, that's one of the reasons I like that line is because I can see it and I can, if, I can see if it's moving a weird direction, it's a little bit like a strike indicator. Of course, that probably means fish can see it better too. But if you're using a darker braid or the dark colored unifilament line, I think that the line shy issues or, or lack of uh, finesse in that presentation is probably not going to cost you any fish in the normal circumstances. Well, that's it for now. I hope this has been helpful to anybody who's thinking about getting out there and doing any early spring, late winter perch fishing. All of what I've said goes for the white perch run that comes right after the yellow perch run as well. The same gear, the same tactics tend to work for both fish uh, in those circumstances. So this would also work for white perch. The bottom line is if you have an ultralight or a light action spinning rod in your arsenal, that's going to be a perfect outfit to go target these fish with. So bundle up, layer up, get out there, bring your ultralight or your light action spinning rod, and good luck catching some yellow perch and white perch in the next month and a half, two months. As always, it's Manly Parks, the Brandywine Angler. We'll catch you next time.